Hello again guys, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with the Night Legends of Runeterra video and today I want to talk about Ephelios, our first look at a new champion coming along with these new champion expansions. So excluding our traditional release cycle of expansions with champions, ETC, we are also going to be getting an additional champion expansion every few months which is going to come with a new uh, champion which is fantastic, more content, Legends of Runeterra absolutely killed it with their announcements today but today I just want to break down Aphilios the new card itself and just talk about uh, how competitively viable it may or may not be coming into the current uh, meta game. Aphilios is going to be a new type 1 champion it's going to be a 3 mana 3-3 coming along with lots of new mechanics with the moon weapons so Aphilios will be if you nightfall it pick a moon weapon to create in hand when you've played two other cards in a round, create a phased moon weapon in hand. If you don't already have one, I'll explain that in just a few moments. And then we have uh, Filios' leveled form, which becomes a 3 mana 4 4, which is utterly crazy. But uh, with its leveled form, it comes with the same effect. But now at the round start, when you've played two other cards in a round, create a phased moon weapon in hand. If you don't already have one, your moon weapons cost one less. So let's just break down all of the moon weapons here. So Aphilios' moon weapons are all slow speed spells, which all of them also cost 2 mana. So the Cal Calibrum is going to deal 3 damage to a target follower, and then you'll phase a Severum or Gravitum. So this is like re re reverting back to what we talked about when creating a phased moon weapon. So the phased moon weapons are basically going to be a card that which you will use to kind of uh, similar to invoking, I believe you'll be phasing the Severum or Gravitum, so you will choose between those two weapons. So each of these weapons, similar to anybody who may or may not have played League of Legends, uh, he works in a very similar function in terms of his actual mechanics. There's a lot of similar trends here in terms of uh, cycling between the weapons. But in Runeterra, it's a little bit more lenient. You'll kind of like go between three cycles roughly, which of uh, you'll be picking between two weapons. But you kind of get the idea, you'll be phasing a weapon, which means that once you've played a certain weapon, that weapon will phase you an, another uh, choice between two other weapons, and so on and so on. So it kind of creates a little bit of depth in terms of the mechanics, but I'm sure it's not something that after a few, you know, a few dozen games, it's not something that you can start to get used to. I'm not really sure how, like in depth games will get like will, will players actually plan multiple turns ahead around Aphilius's weapon probably will it impact a, a greater outcome of the game maybe one in every dozen games will it actually impact that much where if you had have planned further ahead you may have got the better outcome play uh, but also your opponent is going to be aware of what choices you get so your opponent can at the same time start to think about what you may or may not choose from your phased weapons because you get two choices but anyway we'll stop rambling on about that for a moment and talk more about the weapons as we were talking about so Calibrum it will deal three damage you'll phase Severum or Gravitum a uh, Severum is going to be giving an ally plus one plus two in life still this round and then you'll phase Gravitum or Infernum Gravitum is going to be a uh, stun an enemy if it's a follower stun it again next round start that's pretty cool we're seeing uh, a multiple scaling effect in terms of stunning a unit over multiple turns similar to mind splitter and what it does but just in one cheap spell Ephernum is going to give an ally plus two plus one and overwhelm this round and then Crescendum, which looks kind of uh, interesting, will summon a two cost follower from your deck. If it has a Nightfall, activate it. And then that one will phase Calibrum or Severum, going back kind of to the top here. But yeah, you can kind of see that there's a lot of cool mechanics with this card. And there's a, a minor amount of thinking ahead, but nothing that I think will be too detrimental to the game. Similar to Invoking, where there's a little bit of thinking ahead. Uh, but yeah, the mechanics there are quite cool. I think Aphilios looks pretty amazing. And of course, Aphilios' uh, champion signature spell will be Gifts from Beyond, a two cost burst speed spell, which will choose a moon weapon to create in hand. Now, I'm not sure if there's going to be other followers and spells coming along uh, with Aphilios that will bring similar mechanics, or if maybe we'll see them in the near future. Most similar to Reforge and kind of how Riven has followers that bring the similar mechanic. But for now, it seems like there's enough synergy within Aphilios' own kit 
its signature spell to kind of uh, enhance the moon weapons that is very similar to Twist of Fate in that he's just a very good standalone well-rounded card. But anyway, let's talk about just how strong he may or may not be. So I'm going to try and make this brief and get to the point as much as I can because I do tend to ramble on uh, sometimes. But first of all, the first thing I want to say that Aphilios' stat line is quite acceptable. 3 mana 3-3s three can be used in most meta games and they are uh, playable. Now in terms of leveling up Aphilios, uh, it seems that it could be done kind of between after about two turns on average, you can do it if the stars align. So leveling up Aphilios um, does seem realistic, especially assuming that we are not going to receive any other followers or and spells that will come with the moon weapon synergy, because at this point it's pretty safe to assume that we probably aren't outside of Aphilios' signature spell. Um, but to level up Aphilios, essentially you would not fall him out, which would be quite important to do because you need to get the moon weapon to create in hand, play two other cards in a round, and then create the phase moon weapon so you can play another moon weapon, and then um, kind of look to do it again next turn. Um, one thing I am curious about is whether or not you can generate multiple phase moon weapons in one turn, uh, because that would kind of make the leveling up Aphilios in two turns easier and probably actually that'll be the only way you can do it uh, so on average Aphilios will be flipping after about three turns which is a bit of a stretch in terms of like cards being able to stick on the field but you know if you're, if you're playing some certain defensive tools maybe you can stick I think Pale Cascade will be a fantastic card alongside Aphilios to protect him and just is generally a really powerful card so flipping Aphilios is not going to happen quite regularly. In fact, um, I think more often than not, Aphilios will be dealt with. So I guess the thing that we want to ask is like, how good is Aphilios just kind of if you play him, right? And unlike some other champions, like he's not a champion that needs to be leveling up to help you win the game. I think he does come with a fair bit of good generation um, in decks that might be a bit more lenient on champion choices. You can maybe just slot Aphilios in instead like let's take for example we've seen some experimentation with like Zoe Lee Sin and you know alongside that we've also seen other mid-range decks uh, playing the Grand Plaza etc within Targon which is kind of like the Aurelian Soul uh, Leona like maybe you might consider slotting Aphilios into some of those decks however I don't think it's like optimal or necessary and um, he just might be a little bit underwhelming compared to some other champion choices if you're not kind of focused on the value that Aphilios can bring. But assuming that we might see a new spawn of, you know, a new Aphilios deck, which is more focused on him, I think he can kind of uh, be a considerable replacement for some new Nightfall decks. Uh, typically we saw, uh, well, for example, we saw uh, Nocturne Diana as a Nightfall archetype. Like maybe we can start to see uh, Diana or Aphilios instead because Aphilios does come with a lot of synergy in terms of like the Nightfall effect. It's only the one time whammy Nightfall, but it is important that we do Nightfall amount. So doing it on curve is going to be uh, relatively strong. I do think Aphilios wants to be in more faster strategies because those uh, moon weapons are quite cheap for what they can do. So he is definitely more of a tempo tool. And then uh, kind of like the Nightfall deck, if you're playing a more aggressive strategy, you're typically developing multiple threats, which makes it harder for your opponent to be removing everything. So uh, maybe there's potential for Aphilios to kind of create a newer Nightfall deck that might be a bit more uh, focused on the, the value of what Aphilios can do instead of the, like for example, uh, what Nocturne does in terms of ending games. Like outside of specifically playing Nightfall decks, I don't know if Aphilios would be like the best replacement for some other archetypes uh, that we already have pre-existing in the metagame, but I can definitely see potentially a new Nightfall deck featuring Aphilios that looks to play a faster strategy. And then if like Aphilios kind of gets dealt with, they have some other threats coming along the way. Now, I'm not sure if you would still maybe do Aphilios Nocturne or Aphilios Diana. Maybe Aphilios Nocturne makes the most sense to create a more aggressive strategy because Dyne is a bit more of a like uh, a tempo removal tool and Nocturne's more of like a finisher, then there's probably room for uh, consideration there. Uh, maybe there'll be some sort of like Nightfall control deck that would consider playing Aphilios. We haven't really seen like 
there's not really a nightfall control deck but you know there there, there could be i think Aphelios is pretty cool in terms of like the amount of utility the amount of utility he brings but i don't necessarily think like so we let's let's make the new Aphelios deck in the end it's probably just going to be a more greedy version of faster and mid-range decks and i think that like even though Aphelios looks really cool um i don't know if like creating creating an Aphelios deck is actually going to be the best way of approaching this champion because like he does have a really strong flip condition and that creating moon weapons is really cool but i think he just he just complements a lot of different strategies and i don't know if it's necessarily going to be like the ultimate Aphelios deck but time will yet to tell we'll just have to wait and see as we already spoke about like in general the value that he generates is really strong and i think it could be a lot of fun these are all slow speed spells though so in general your opponent's going to be able to easily play around most of the weapons that you generate and then they're also going to know like what weapons you're phasing so they can kind of predict what's going to come so yeah a lot of the time Aphelios will get kind of dealt with on curve uh, from certain strategies that already exist so I think Aphelios is really cool I think he is definitely a, a cut above the rest in terms of some of the champions that get revealed I think he can he can I think he will be competitive um I think like the closest comparison I could think of was Riven but Riven was kind of very poor because you kind of like to generate those weapon pieces you needed to like kind of wait to come back into your turn where Aphelios just kind of allows you to play your hand out more effectively and then generate that value um flipping Aphelios which will happen sometimes is really strong through mana 4-4 kind of crazy but yeah I think the, the other important thing to note here is that Aphelios is is within the Targon region and Targon's really powerful and if any region can protect Aphelios it is going to be Targon but yes exciting card there's also some other stuff happening too but um I'll leave that for another video maybe you guys have a fantastic day sorry if I rambled on for a little bit I didn't really intend to I'm just kind of spitting my first thoughts and impressions but yeah take it as you will if you have any questions or curiosities you can leave them in the comments below um, we can talk all about it there. You guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon.